Hey, hey, you guys. Welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you are on. I would love to say hello to you guys. I hope everybody's having an amazing Thursday. It has been a busy week for this chick right here, but you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful to, you know, just have what I have, have my job, even the busyness, you know, you have to be grateful for because somebody's always wishing they had what you had. So don't despise those times when you got to get in there and you got to grind because it's going to pay off after a while. And you guys, last week, we talked about just chill to the next episode. So I hope some of you guys were able to understand that, you know, you don't have to take life so seriously all the time. You don't have to overreact to things. Hey, Kinsley, all the time. You know, you have got to learn to just chill sometimes to the next episode because things are going to change. Life is always changing, so nothing is ever going to stay the same. So we need to learn to not allow ourselves to get so worked up over things that we can't think logically and think clearly and make the best decisions that we could possibly make. So I hope you guys got something out of that last week. And let's move on, you know, because y'all know me. I don't like to hold y'all for very long. I like to go ahead and get in here and get it done and let you guys go on your way. So our topic today is I'm surrounded. So what are you surrounded by? That's what we want to talk about. You know, when we were children, our parents used to always tell us about being careful. Don't be around so-and-so. You know, if they found out somebody had a reputation or a child that was getting in trouble all the time, they were always trying to tell you to stay away from so-and-so. Don't go over so-and-so's house. Don't let me catch you around so-and-so. And they were doing that to try to protect you because they know how easily you can be influenced by your surrounding. And it does matter who you spend time with because even without you even realizing it subconsciously, what you hang around with will get inside of you. It will become a part of you. So that's why we have to be careful about what we are surrounded with. So that's what we want to talk about today. And just like our parents, you know, we did the same thing when it came to our children. You know, we were always trying to scope out and see who was doing what, what kids were getting in trouble, what kid belonged to what parent. You know, that's why a lot of times, and this may be older parents that do that, they wanted to know who they were related to, who's your mom, who's your dad, you know, where'd y'all grow up, this, that, and the other. All of those questions were simply to try to find out what kind of person your child was going to be spending time with because you do get influenced by the company that you keep. And not only the people that you surround yourself with affect you, but also what you expose yourself to. You know, it's, it's exciting to want to be exposed to things that are taboo or things that, you know, you know, you know, you couldn't be exposed to as a child. But now that you've grown, you're going to get out there and try some stuff. Be careful what you expose yourself to because... You are opening doors, and a lot of times the enemy will entice you with those things that seem exciting, and you've opened a door that's going to be hard for you to close at some point. So sometimes the major mistakes, you guys, that we make in life as adults come from the influences of our upbringing. You know, I've said to th this to you guys before, you know, sometimes we've come from dysfunctional homes where there's a lot of fighting, a lot of disrespect, you know, a lot of jealousy and envy, that type of stuff. And that does affect you growing up when you're dealing with that and that's what you've been around and that's all that you know. So a lot of times we make mistakes as adults simply because of what we were around as children. And then what you don't know can sometimes hurt you. You know, we used to say, well, what they don't know won't hurt them. But 
ignorance can hurt you. That's why it's so important that when you get out of your parents' house, when you get out of that place where you grew up, that you get out there with a purpose of learning and growing and, and stretching yourself and becoming the best well-rounded person you can be. And number three, lack of a positive role model or a mentor can also affect you in life. You know, if you're not surrounded by people that speak life into you, if you don't, you weren't raised with a father and maybe you don't know what it's like uh, to submit to a man simply because you've never seen that before, it does make it harder for women as adults to submit to men if they never saw any women in their life or their mother submitting to a man, and especially if he was not the right type of man. So a lot of things that we're dealing with right now as adults, it came from our childhood. It came from what we were surrounded with, what we had no choice of being surrounded with. Because being in a dysfunctional home as a child, most of the times you don't have a choice. There's nowhere else for you to go. And so you have to just endure it the best way you can and try your best, you know, to stay out of the way until you can get up and you can get out of that situation. So sometimes the lack of a positive role model or mentor in your life can affect you as an adult. Number four, lack of resources or just poverty. You know, that affects you too growing up. You know, it limits you as to what you can be exposed to because if you don't have money, it's a lot of things you can't go to that maybe the other kids on the other side of town get to get exposed to. They get to ex get exposed to art and traveling and different types of things that you may never see you know, as a child and sometimes not even as an adult because sometimes that poverty mentality or, or that lack of being able to handle money gets passed down to our children and they become adults that don't know how to save money, that don't know how to manage their finances because who taught them? Nobody. Because there was nobody that they saw that was doing it the right way, that was handling it the right way. So therefore, they have to figure things out. They have to get into debt. They have to lose things, get things repossessed, get evicted, things of that nature, simply because they weren't taught about finances growing up. So it does matter what you're exposed to and what your surroundings are. And number five, oftentimes, hey, Miriam, oftentimes when you come from an upbringing that's dysfunctional, you have a more difficult time as an adult when it comes to relationships. Like I said before, if you've never had a good relationship modeled in front of you or, or you've never seen a relationship that actually works the way it's supposed to, it makes it more hard for you as an adult because you almost can't do what you don't know. And so, therefore, you have to make sure that you're ready for a relationship so that you don't bring your own dysfunction into that other person's life. And that's why it's so good to do the work on yourself, especially when you know you've come from a rough background or a dysfunctional background or a background where it left you scarred with a lot of pain and a lot of anger. Do the work on yourself before you bring somebody else in your life. That is so important. That is the kindest, most loving thing you can do for somebody else. Get you together first. Because there's nothing worse than wanting to be in a relationship, but then you become the burden and don't know how to handle the relationship. And you mishandle a good person. And sometimes you don't get a chance to get another person like that in your life. And sometimes that one person that you hurt simply because you were not healed you may never get another person like that. You may find other people, but you'll always be wishing for that one person that was in your life that was that one that that could have been, you know, your forever person. So that's why it's so important when you know that you came from a rough background. We all know who we are. We need to do the work and work on ourselves and get ourselves healed and, and come up with some better behavior and do the work to try to find better ways of communicating, better ways of even having an argument. You know, when you've been brought up in dysfunction, you don't even know how to argue properly. All you know is getting mad, getting loud, putting your hands on people. You know, that is not how you have an argument with somebody. An argument is a disagreement. 
but you have to agree to be adults about it. You have to agree to be civilized. That's a true argument. Anything else is a confrontation. Everything else is a fight. And that's what you don't want to do. So you have to learn more appropriate behaviors because, like I said, nobody's going to tolerate being mistreated, being talked bad to, being, you know, talked to in a way that they feel like is disrespectable for very long. Number seven, understand we all have a freedom of choice and we can willfully choose who we decide to be surrounded by or who we isolate ourselves from. So that's why we have to be selective, you guys. Don't just let any and everybody in your personal space because everybody doesn't mean you good. You know, just because they look a certain way, just because they talk a certain way, do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. Check people out before you let them get close to you. And then it's hard to heal when you spend your time, all your time around people who are broken. You know, what would even motivate you to heal if you've got other people that are in a pity party with you? They got the same problems you got. There's no motivation to be better because misery does love company, you guys. And so you end up in a situation where you're always miserable and you've got all these cheerleaders helping you to stay miserable. So you never get healed when you hang around with a bunch of broken people. You need to get around people that have been there, done that, bought a t-shirt, and they made their way out. Those are the kind of people that will help you move forward in your healing. Those people that won't feel sorry for you. Those people that won't allow you to have a pity party. They're always going to be trying to pull you out and say, hey, come on now. Come on. Everything's going to be all right. You know, we, we're not doing this today. Those are the kind of people you need to have around you. And just remember, number eight, iron is supposed to sharpen iron. It says that in God's word. You know, that's why you have to be selective. You know, you need somebody strong enough to help you when you're not being your best self. And you need to be strong enough to help somebody else when they're not being their best self. Because when you don't find strong people, because like I say, you end up wasting years in the same place. A true friend, a good friend is not going to let you stay still that long because they see your true potential. And if they don't see you moving like they think you ought to be moving or know that you can be moving, they're going to say something to you and they're going to do what they can to get you going. And just remember, you guys, number nine, somebody's always looking up to you. I don't care if they never tell you how much they admire you. You know, I, I'm understanding people a little bit more because you know how you wonder why people always looking at you sideways or acting like they don't like you, this, that, and the other. There is something about you that they admire. And instead of them being grown enough, being big enough to say, hey, I just wanted to tell you, I like the way you do this. I like the way you carry yourself. I like the way you speak. I like the way you handle yourself. Some people have so much dysfunction in them. They don't even know how to give people a compliment. And so instead of them doing that, they would rather snare at you and roll their eyes at you and act like, you know, you did something to them. But a lot of times where that jealousy and that hate and envy is coming from is because secretly that person admires something about you and they're angry with themselves that they can't have what you have. So in short, what I'm trying to say, you guys, is check your surroundings. Make sure you don't have a Judas in the camp. Because sometimes, baby, you can look at them old pictures and look at how some of them people is cutting sideways eyes at you. Look at who's really happy for you when something happens. I'm learning to scan the room with my eyes, you know, to see if somebody's kicking or, or if they're really smiling, if they're rolling their eyes when somebody's saying something nice about me. People will give themselves away. You need to pay attention to your surroundings because a lot of times we got a Judas or two in our camp and we don't even know it. They just waiting on their opportunity to show themselves. And sometimes they can't help themselves. They'll be rolling their eyes or shaking their head or walking away when somebody's doing something or saying something nice for you. Pay attention to the body language. So let's talk about what we should and shouldn't surround ourselves with. 
let's start with what we should avoid surrounding ourselves with. Number one, number one, you guys, is toxic people. Toxic people, people that drain and take away from you emotionally and physically. Avoid surrounding yourself with them and don't let them get around you. You know, you're not obligated to spend time with people, you know, that are toxic. I don't care if it's even your family members. You don't owe them that. Learn how to bob and weave, to come in and get out. You know, I've learned, you know, just because of the dysfunction in my own family, I've learned to make sure I drive my own car to every family function. And that helps me to be able to stay on my level without dropping. Not that I think I'm better than anybody, but sometimes you need to protect the level that you're on, you guys, because there's always somebody, and it's sad to say, sometimes it's your own people that say they love you, that's blood related, that think that you think you're too much. They think that you're sitting too high. They think that you're holding your head too high. So you have to do what you got to do to stay on this level. Don't drop just because they're your family. Stay on this level. If that means you got to change the subject, if that means you got to walk into another room, if that means you got to say, all right, y'all, well, I got to be somewhere else and I'm, 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 I'm going to talk to y'all later. It was good seeing everybody. Get your little hugs in, even the ones that do that little half hug. Get your hugs in, get out in your car, turn up your music and go. But don't allow people to take you off the level God has gotten you to. You fought too hard to get to that level. Quit letting family and people that, quote unquote, say they love you, try to take you back to who you used to be. So remember your level. You have got to have control over that. And you know in the family who really don't like you and who do. So make sure that you're not spending too much time with people that you already know don't enjoy your company. Okay? And same thing with your friends. You know which friends are never really happy for you. They always got something smart to say. You know, you know these things. So you need to learn to avoid surrounding yourself with these people for long periods of time. Number two, people that weaken you and take you further away from the person you want to be. Just like what I said, you know, just because you're familiar with somebody does not mean that you need to spend a lot of time with them because sometimes the familiar people will take you for granted. Sometimes the familiar people are more jealous of you than the new people that you meet. And so you have to protect where you are because you don't want to go back to what you used to be because you prayed about that you pushed hard you worked hard don't let another person change your life don't let another person be that important that they weaken you and take you further away from the person you want to be make up your mind of who you want to be and let the devil know there ain't nothing you're going to do to stop me i don't care who you bring in my life i don't care who don't like me i don't care who talks about me i don't care who's got a negative comment about me you have got to get some thick skin and understand everybody does not want to see you blessed everybody does not want to see you you know be an influencer they don't want to see you move from the level where you're at. So accept that, get over it, wipe your tears about it, and keep it moving, okay? And number three, avoid people that you know that really don't like you. They've shown you in some kind of way. You know, they've made you feel like you didn't belong in some kind of way. People show you how they, how they feel about you with their actions. So if you're trying to hang around people and you feel like the odd man out all the time, somebody don't like you because if they really liked you, they would embrace you and they would recognize that you don't feel comfortable and they would make a point of bringing you in and embracing you and say, girl, come on, what you doing over there? Why are you acting so shy? Come on, let's do this. Let's do that. So when they don't do that, that means they really not liking you anyway. They just tolerating you anyway. So don't surround yourself with those kind of people that don't engage with you and try to make you feel comfortable. Number four, negative people. 
We have got to learn to limit our time with people that don't have nothing but complaints. Every time you talk to them, it's a complaint. You know, we all go through things and yes, life is hard. But every time I come around you, you got a whole list of complaints. Every time I try to share something with you, you try to tell me what could happen, the negative stuff that could happen. You know, I don't know if you should do this. You better be careful, blah, 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 blah. Watch out for people like that because they don't believe in themselves. Therefore, they don't want you to get out there and do anything. They always have a negative uh, response to everything. Avoid spending a lot of time around those people. Those people are miserable on the inside and they need to be healed. Number five, avoid people who are manipulating, controlling, or abusive and can cause harm to your mental or emotional well-being. And sometimes that's the people we love the most, you guys. Sometimes it's our mother. Sometimes it's our father. Sometimes it's our sisters or brothers, you know, that, that know you so well. They know your heart so well that they manipulate you, that they know how to turn on the tears. They know how to say certain things to make you feel guilty, uh, to make you, you know, do what they want you to do so that they can control the situation. You have got to stand for something, you guys, even with your own family. You know, I'm one of those family members, you know, I'm for peace. So I don't have to run nothing. You tell me what I'm supposed to bring. Tell me where I'm supposed to go. Because I used to jump in there with my little ideas and stuff. And then it was always a competition. And you've got to learn how to step down and back off. Because you know what? My peace is worth more than trying to be the one running the show. So if it makes you happier to run the show... Be woman enough or be man enough to step back and say, you got it and let them get it and be supportive of them and help them out where you can because something in them makes them feel like they have to bully their way. They have to manipulate their way in, into getting everybody's respect. So sometimes you have to know within yourself who that person is and what they're trying to do and how they're trying to manipulate or control the situation. And you have to counteract that. And a lot of times you counteract that by your behavior. Sometimes just being quiet or sometimes just not getting in the middle of the mess. You know, and I'm learning to do that even with my own family. I just try to stay neutral on as much as I can because it's not worth it. And a lot of times what they're trying to bicker about don't amount to a hill of beans anyway. So, you know, you're getting all worked up and then you got to see these people for holidays and stuff like that. It's not worth it. Just stay neutral and stay out of it as much as you can. But don't allow just because they're related to you some kind of way, don't allow people to manipulate you and guilt you into doing anything. And family is very good at that. And number six, people who are not supportive. Don't spend your time around a lot of people that won't even support you. You trying your best to do something different. You trying your best. You working hard and they don't have anything nice to say. You know, you ask them, you know, you tell them about events and stuff. They not even trying to come. They not even trying to be a part of your life. They letting you know they don't support you. So don't always expect support from the people that's supposed to be closest to you. Sometimes your biggest support is from stranger. And be willing to accept that. And don't be so disappointed in people. Because like I said before, a lot of times people don't want to see you doing better. They don't want to be there for you. They don't want to cheerlead for you. That's something that's wrong inside of them. That has nothing to do with you. So you got to stop taking those things personal. You know, just because of your relationship, just recognize that that person is not for you 100% and deal with them accordingly. And just understand where they're not there, God will send somebody else. All you got to do is pray for it. And number seven, people who discourage or belittle you. You know, you're going to have these people that always want to be above you or always want to make you feel small. Stop surrounding yourself around people that were always trying to show you up and show up your mistakes, you know, and sometimes that's family too, y'all. Real is real. You know, you can't, cho you can't choose who you related to. That's God's doing for whatever reason. And sometimes I question it, but you know what? 
Everything happens for a reason, and you can learn even from your dysfunctional family members about how to act, and it makes you a better person because you don't want to be like them. And so just understand that, you know, there are people that they can't stand to see you on top. They can't see stand to see that you're rising to the top, and so they have to let you know where you were and who you used to be and don't act like this and don't act like this. Remember you're this. Remember where you came from. Watch out for those people that always want to discourage you and make you feel small when God is making you a big person. Because sometimes just because they're not growing, just because they're not expanding in their life and being more cultured, they're will sometimes discourage you and try to make it seem like you're doing too much just because you're trying to be different and trying to be an individual. Some people like you to stay within a box that they have set for you in their mind. And when you try to step out of it, they try to discourage you to get you to go backwards and get back to where they feel like you need to be. And then eight, people who don't respect boundaries. People that you've asked them not to do something or you've asked them to respect something and they constantly keep breaking those boundaries, that person doesn't respect you. That's why they feel like they'll do good for a little while and then they go back to doing the stuff you ask them not to do. Ladies, men in relationships, there's a respect issue there because if you really love me and you really respect me, you're not going to forget those boundaries I set. And, and you already know it upsets me. You already know that I've sat down with you and I told you about that. So you know what you're doing. You just gave it a little bit more time. You know, you feel like, no, oh, well, she's not going to say nothing. It's been a long time since I did it the last time. But people who don't respect boundaries, they truly don't respect you in some way. So don't spend a lot of time around those people. And it's important to remember that people can change. They can change because sometimes people are just immature at the time that you're dealing with them right now. And that's why sometimes you have to let people go and let them grow up. So sometimes they're just immature, but understand that people can change. And sometimes people can be in a different phrase, phase of their life and may not be good for you right now, but later on in life, they might be a better match for you. And it's also important that we be kind and respectful. Even when we're ending a relationship, there's nothing like people that end a relationship cursing each other out and talking bad about each other. Like you never had any good years. It's almost like you're spitting on those good years. Why do people do that? Don't do that. Remember, you had some good years somewhere or you wouldn't have been friends that long or you wouldn't have been in a relationship that long. So learn to leave with kindness and appreciate the time, the good time that you did have. And just understand that sometimes we do outgrow one another and we have to move on, but it shouldn't have to be ugly. It shouldn't have to be violent. It shouldn't have to be messy. And then number nine takes me right into that. Avoid surrounding, surrounding yourself with drama. You know, excitement is one thing, but drama is a whole nother Situation Drama will get you pulled into something that you may not be able to get yourself out of. Drama will get you in a situation where everybody's talking about what you said when all you was doing was responding to what they said. You know, you have to be careful about that because when it comes to drama, they're always looking for somebody to blame. And you can jump in something and then you end up being the one everybody's mad at. Everybody's attacking you. So don't surround yourself with drama. Understand there's a time and a place for everything. There are ages and seasons in our life when we need to be over some stuff and not act, act in a certain way. We need to act our age and act the maturity level where we should be and understand that that drama comes out of ignorance because drama only comes when people aren't willing to be honest with each other. They're not willing to communicate effectively and somebody done lied somewhere. Somebody done done something disrespectful. So none of that is, is something that you should be attracted to. So you need to avoid that at all costs and avoid surrounding yourself with it. Number 10, 
avoid people who gossip. Because one thing I know about people that gossip about other people, they are talking about you to somebody else. All you got to do is not agree with them or do something that they don't like because they got that gossiping spirit in them. So it ain't nothing for them to switch up on you and start talking about you. You know, you got to know who in your circle is like that and recognize you don't need to spend a lot of time with them. You don't need to tell them your personal stuff. You don't need to let them get that close to you and know your business. Because a gossiper simply cannot help themselves. They got to tell somebody. They going to add on to it. They going to do what they got to do to get attention. Because they want to be the first one to put the word out. And messy people uh, never want to seem like they're messy. They always come off. They all have their own signature line like, hey, girl. Or, hey, I was just calling to see what you were doing. And then they can't wait to spill the tea. So, you know who these people are, you are the one responsible for not allowing that in your life. And a lot of times, you just have to cut those people off because they don't want to do any better. And then 12, avoid being around sad situations all the time or people that enjoy being sad all the time. Because you know what? You'll end up being everybody's savior. You'll be trying to fix everybody. You'll be trying to make everybody happy. And that's not your job. It is not your job to make somebody else happy. And it took me a while to understand that nobody, God didn't give anybody the responsibility of making me happy. That is my individual job. Just like it's your individual job. That is your life. You need to find a way to get back to your happy place and enjoy your life. That is nobody's responsibility because nobody can take that on. Not another human being cannot take on that type of responsibility. Next, stay away from jealous people. That's probably going to be the ones that's doing the gossiping. 14, people who don't keep their word. People that that talk good, but their actions don't line up with their words. You need to learn how to not surround yourself with those people because they'll keep you disappointed all the time. You'll count on them and they'll let you down. They'll tell you, oh, they're for you. They're with you. Okay, they'll set up a time. We're going to do this and that. And they'll pull out on you at the last minute or they may not even call you or even respond to your text messages. Do not continue to surround yourself around those people because you'll stay disappointed and hurt all the time. And life is too short for that. And the last person that you need to not hang around and spend time around is people that like to throw shade and say little smart stuff and, and throw little insults and act like it's a joke. You know, that when they see you get mad, then they want to tell y'all, girl, you need to quit being so sensitive. Oh, you need to quit. I was just playing. Stay away from them because behind every joke is some truth. Y'all know that. Y'all done been around them people. Stop surrounding yourself with people that do not like you and that are jealous of you. So let's talk about who you should or what you should surround yourself with. Number one, people who tell you the hard truth gently. Because somebody that loves you is not going to yell something out disrespectful. They're not going to embarrass you in front of a lot of people and everybody here, you know, how they're correcting you or something that, you know, may be hurtful to you. They're going to give you the hard truth gently and out of a place of love. Those are the people you need in your life because you need somebody to tell you when you're wrong. Because we're all wrong sometimes. Nobody gets it right. And you, we all need that friend that'll say, girl, hey, I need to talk to you for a minute. Come go for a ride with me. Come go for a walk with me. Come step outside with me. Because they're going to do you like that because they don't want to embarrass you or hurt you in any way. So understand, you need those type of people in your life to keep you on point. Because anybody that's always a yes person or agreeing with everything that you're doing, they really don't love you because agreeing with somebody with their wrong, you're basically hurting them. You're basically setting them up for failure when you don't speak up and let them know that they're wrong about something or their behavior is going to get them in trouble. Number two, surround your yourself with people and places that are respectful. You know, people need to respect you as an individual. 
and not try to change you and make you like them or, or try to tell you how you should be or how you should act, how you should dress. You know, you should be allowed to be an individual and have your own personality. If you've got to be like people in order for them to want you to be around them, if you've got to think like them or if you got to agree with everything that they're saying or doing, that's not your tribe. That's not your people. You want somebody that that respects your individuality and they expect your privacy and they ex they respect the boundaries that you set. You know, you have to set boundaries with everybody and a person that's truly mature, somebody that's truly for you, they go, you know what? I understand. Yeah, I won't call you after a certain time because I know, you know, you need to get your rest. I know you're busy. I know you need to spend time with your family. I know you're trying to do this. I know you're trying to study. You know, that's how they respond to you when you set boundaries. They don't get mad and get an attitude with you when you let them know, hey, do me a favor, you know, don't, don't, don't come by on such and such and such a day. Those are my days. I do this with my family, my days, you know, I go to church, my days, you know, those people respect and they understand that you have a life. And when also we talk about respect, surround yourself with things that have good reputation, go places that have good reputation. Don't just find yourself showing up anywhere and everywhere. Every place is not considered respectable. Every place doesn't have a good reputation. You know, look at yourself and look where you're trying to go. Don't accept everybody's invitation because every place is not the place that you need to be for where you're trying to go in life. And it's okay if you miss out on some things that may just not be part of your journey. And you have to be okay with that. So make sure where you're going is respectful and has a good reputation. And make sure that the people you're surrounding yourself with, they respect your individuality. They respect your privacy. Don't have to know all of your business. And they respect the boundaries that you set. Number three, people who have kind hearts and do things without expecting anything in return. You know, there's nothing like being around a giver and that's number four. Givers teach you how to give. But but if you're surrounded by people, they do something nice for you and they expect you to do something for them, that becomes more of a burden than a blessing because like, oh man, they bought my dinner. Okay, I gotta I gotta make some time to make sure I take her out to dinner. Oh, she bought me a gift. Oh, I gotta make sure I get her a gift. Oh, she did this. Oh, I gotta make sure. That becomes more of a burden because if that person gets mad because you don't reciprocate what they did, they didn't do it from the right spirit. And those type of people can be draining because you dread them doing anything for you because you know you got to pay them back in some kind of way or they'll have an issue with you or an attitude with you. Number five, surround yourself with accountability. You know, find people and surround yourself with people that, you know, when they mess up, they apologize. When they mess up, they try to fix it. When they mess up, you know, they fess up to it. And that's the kind of person that's going to help you grow. Those are the kind of people that are going to help you stay accountable because you're not going to be coming to them with a bunch of excuses because they're going to ask you a bunch of questions and you're going to have to keep that lie going. So you want to be around people who can admit their uh, shortcomings, I'm sorry, hey, Christelle, their shortcomings, people that don't mind saying they're sorry, people that don't make excuses, and people that hold you accountable for your word. If you say you're going to do something, they're going to call and check on you, hey, how's that project going? Or hey, how is school going? Or hey, how is such and such that you told me you were doing when we talked last month, how's it going? You know, those people keep you on point and keep you on track. And those are the kind of people you want to surround yourself about because you want to be successful in life. You don't want to look back years, years back and say, I'm still in the same place I was three years ago. I'm still in the same place I was 10 years ago. And I never finished this. I never finished that. Sometimes you need somebody to remind you Hey, how's that going? Hey, did you still want to do such and such? You know, and that way you can stay on point. And that leads me to number six. That's a goal-oriented person. Goal-minded people are the kind of people that help you succeed in life. And we need to spend more time with people 
that actually have a goal for their life, that actually like to keep moving forward, like like to be better than where they are today. Because those people encourage you and they motivate you and they make you want to be better. Seven, you want to be around God-fearing people, people that believe in God. Because you know what? When you're dealing with God-fearing people, there are some lines, most god I ain't going to say all, most God-fearing people just won't cross. And it's a lot of times if if you have people in your corner that are believers, it's a little bit easier to go to them and talk to them because if they are true believers, they're going to have some conviction in their heart. If they're true believers, they're going to have compassion in their heart. So understand there will always be people around you that say they're believers, but you know what? The easiest way to find out who they really stand for or what's really in them is to have a disagreement or, or do something they don't like. That will show you exactly what you're dealing with because what people say in anger and what people do in anger is what they truly feel about you. And so try the spirit by the spirit. You know, everybody ain't who they say they are. So try to surround yourself with truly God-fearing people because they will be more compassionate and they won't be so quick to judge you. And that would be somebody that would be willing to share with you that they made a mistake too. They messed up too. You're not the only one, you know, because they should not have any shame about their past. They should not have any judging spirit about them if they truly fear God, because when God is truly within you, he shows you your weaknesses, your frailties. So therefore, there's no way you can judge anybody else when God is truly in you and the Holy Spirit lives within you and they truly believe in God. So surround yourself with people that that spiritually you have something in common with to, to the point where you can at least go to them and say, will you pray with me? Okay. And then number um, nine I'm sorry, eight, people who don't mind mentoring and helping open doors for your future. We have got to stay away from all these petty people that don't want to bring you along. They want to be successful, but as soon as there's an opportunity for you, they try to act like they can't get in there and help you. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll check on that for you and never follow up. You know, sometimes people don't want you on the level where they are recognize it if they keep making excuses when you know that they have the position to open doors for you and and they're not willing to do that for you or you've shown an interest in something and they kind of shut you down about it because they don't feel like you belong there that's not your tribe that's not your tribe there's nothing that you can't do and people that surround you need to feel that way about themselves and they need to feel the same way about you and any chance they can help you get ahead they will help you get ahead those are the kind of people we need to surround ourselves with and sometimes it's going to be not the people that you think sometimes it's not going to be them people that's been with you for years you'll be amazed how, how some of them have the opportunity to bless your game and they won't open their mouth or they won't even tell you about opportunities because simply they don't want to see you get ahead. And then number nine, I think I'm on nine, people who make you excited about life and the possibilities ahead. That's who you want to be around. People that understand that things happen, that today might have been a bad day, but girl, come on. We got tomorrow to look forward to. We're going we gonna to get cute tomorrow. We're going to get up. We're going to pray, and we're going we gonna to start our day, and we're going to own it. You know, you need people that talk to you like that because we all have a bad day sometimes and you need that person that will will say to you, you know what, I know you had a rough day and I can tell, you know, by your mood, something's bothering you. But girl, raise your head up, raise your head up. It's going to be all right. Let's keep it moving. You know, as they say, one monkey don't stop no show. Let's keep it moving. So you need people like that that make you excited about your life and the possibilities ahead. And number 10 or 11, uh, surround yourself with wisdom. Stop 
hanging around the same ignorance you've been hanging around. They still talking about the same old stuff, still not going nowhere, still not maturing, still not looking towards the future, still talking about the past all the time. Get around wisdom. Sometimes that's our elderly people. You know, they, they know a lot more than you think, but we think we know so much. And we don't ever want to take the time to sit down and talk to them and listen. They can talk to you about how to make your marriage last. They can talk to you about how to sustain your family and keep your family together. And I think that's a lot of why we see the families falling apart now. It's because the big mamas are gone. You know, big mom, nobody wants to be called big mama anymore. Nobody wants to act like big mama. She was big mama for a reason because she was the matriarch. She was the one that said, uh-uh, I'm not having this. I'm not having it. Both of y'all get over here. I need to talk to both of y'all. You know, she was the one that prayed for everybody. She was the one that made sure that there was no animosity that she knew about. She was going to get it straight. And a lot of times people don't want to do that even within their own family. They just watch things fall apart and they talk about it. And so therefore, there's a lot of lack of wisdom out there. And our children are, are wise in some ways, but they're weak in so many other ways. And we could really bless them and we could bless ourselves by listening and surrounding ourselves with wisdom. And the Bible talks about, you know, if you lack wisdom, he said, ask for it. Wisdom comes from God. All you got to do is, is say, God, surround me and give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And that's something that you pray for. And God will bring it to pass. He'll bring people in your life to sit next to you and mentor you and talk to you and share things with you. But you got to get in there and get it for yourself too, which requires you to get in God's word and spend time with God, which leads me to the next thing. You know, the next thing that you want to surround yourself with all day, every day is God's presence and his angels of protection. You know, I pray for those things every day and I set my atmosphere. You know, it's up to you to set your atmosphere. When you wake up in the morning, don't take that for granted. Don't think that, oh, well, I'm up. You know, it's another work day, blah, blah, blah. Remember who woke you up. Remember that it's a privilege to be able to wake up. You know, so many people did not, you know. So you have to set the atmosphere. I set my atmosphere in the morning. This is what I do. I get up. I say, thank you, God, before I sit up. Sit up. First thing I do is I turn on my worship music. And that's what I get ready to in the morning, that's what I brush my teeth to, shower to, get dressed to, all of that, makeup, hair, all of that, to my worship music. And when I do that, I set the atmosphere for my day because I'm telling God, I need you. I need you to go with me because I don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know what I'm going to deal with. I don't know who's going to lash out at me. I don't know what dangers are ahead of me. And I pray for my children every morning. Set the atmosphere and, and make sure God's presence is always around you. Spend some time with him. When you get a minute during the day, just thank him for your day. Even for those hard days, just thank him because you made it. You got through it. So understand and recognize and acknowledge God and keep his presence around you as much as possible. But you have to set the atmosphere because it's amazing when I do that. A lot of stuff just rolls off my shoulder. I don't get upset about things and people are always surprised why I don't get upset, why I don't seem to be bothered by a lot of things. I have decided, mind you, I have decided that some things are just not for me to worry about. Some things are just, like I said in one podcast, not my sink, not my dishes. You know, everything is not for me to put my hands on and put my mouth on. So I'm learning to, if it is not going to affect me in a major way, just let it go. Let's get through this day. Let's get work done. Let's, let's be the best we can be. Because I come in with a purpose every day. And if I come in and I, I remind myself of my purpose, that's why I keep my music going at my desk. I keep my worship music. And sometimes I switch over to R&B. Sometimes I switch over to hip hop. But something about music sets the atmosphere and it keeps me calm and it keeps me 
at a level of being low key and not worrying about too much. So you have to set the set the atmosphere, whatever works for you. And number 12, love. Surround yourself with love. Like I said before, quit spending so much time with people that you know don't like you. You can feel it. You can when you've got God in you, that Holy Spirit lets you feel when you need to watch somebody or when somebody ain't quite right. He lets you feel that. And a lot of times we ignore that. We got to stop ignoring that. Surround yourself with love. And sometimes if you can't find love out there, you know what? Sometimes you need to just go to a peaceful home when you get off from work. Make sure your home is full of love. Make sure you have peace. Make sure your children feel love. Make sure your husband uh, feels love. You know what I'm saying? Create an atmosphere of love in your own home if you can't get it out in the world. That's up to you. You can make that happen. And then number 13, surround yourself with trust, with people you can trust, people with good reputations, people that have proven to you that they're trustworthy. Don't keep spending time with jokers that let you down time after time after time because they can only be who they are and then you're going to stay mad all the time about stuff that you don't even have to deal with. You don't even need to be around them if they've shown you that they're not trustworthy. There's nothing that they have that you need so much that's worth all of that frustration. Nothing that they have. And then um, the last one is people in places that make you feel safe. You need to spend time in places where you feel safe and people that you feel like accept you, people that you feel like don't judge you, people that see you for who you really are, for the amazing person that you really are. If somebody's always judging you and criticizing you and pointing out, oh, you got you got a hair out of place, oh, your dress was up on this side, you need to fix your, you know, always criticizing that doesn't make you feel safe. That makes you feel self-conscious. That makes you feel like you got to worry about your appearance all the time. Get around people that love you for who you are, that accept you, and that see you for the amazing person that you are. They're not seeing all that stuff on the outside. All they know is they're glad that Karen came over. They're glad that Karen you know, is on the phone. They're glad that they're spending some time with you. You know, that's what you need to surround yourself with. People that have genuine joy in being in your presence and they make you feel safe. They've shown you that you're safe around them, that you can talk to them about things and it not get out and be all over the street. So those are the things you should surround yourself with, you guys and those things that you should avoid. So my final thought is as adults, we have to make some hard decisions sometimes regarding who or what we let go of or who or what we hold on to. Emotions oftentimes get in our way, but once you finally realize how precious how precious life is, you guys, and that we all have a time. We all have a set time to be here, a limited amount of time to be here. Then you'll begin to think more with your head and less with your heart. Surround yourself with what gives you a purpose, what makes you happy, what makes you stronger, and what gives you peace. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Have an amazing rest of the week and a wonderful weekend. I have enjoyed you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching Sister I Got You. And I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Have a good day.